Welcome everyone. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the first day of February 2021. Uh, let's look at the agenda. And here's what I've got for today as possible topics. So uh, a fix for the meeting link in the calendar that I'll take care of later. Jenkins Contributor Summit. Contributor Summit Docs Preparation Track, Wiki Migration Plan, and Pull Request Progress. And Encouraging New Contributors. Um, and I would even change, yeah. So any other topics you'd like to put on the agenda? No, and I don't have anything on that. I don't know what's happened to our diversity people. They're not responding. So I need okay. to get back to that. I will ping them, so. Kristen will to coach. I'm willing, right? Uh -huh. I know everybody's a critic. That's great. Hello, Jonathan. Jonathan. Welcome. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> Hi. How are you guys? That's great. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Oh, you said February, and it is February. That's exactly. Great. I'm a man of word. <laughs> I like that. Very good. Yeah, but if you showed up on the last day of the month, you would still be a person of your word, and that's, you know, how things often go. Well, it's, uh, everything goes well. So now I am officially work for a company in Canada. So my plans just work ever too well, as planned. Oh, cool. Good. So you have a new job or an additional job? Yo, a new job. Uh, oh, right. I just, yeah, I just stay back to put all my energy in that plan. So everything goes as planned. Oh, wonderful. Good relations. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> very, very good. All right. So topic, so we've got... We've got Jonathan. This is one that's a great one for you because we're coming, we're approaching a an event that we would love to have you and Vlad and and Meg all involved in. It's the Jenkins Contributor Summit. Uh, every two every year, as part of the a free and open source conference in Belgium, we would hold the Jenkins Contributor Summit, uh, and we would do it in person there at the at the event so that everyone could get together in a room. But this year, that event is virtual. Therefore, we've decided to take the Contributor Summit and make it virtual as well. And we're going to change how, how it's done from a single day, try to gather everybody together to a series of a starter, an end, and then tracks in between the start and the end that focus on specific topics. So we're going to do day one where Oleg Nanashev and others will present, uh, present the various results, how the Jenkins project is doing, what it's done so far in the last year or so, and highlight uh, topics of interest. So for instance, the doc SIG will have a, about a five minute presentation there. Then we'll schedule a bunch of public sessions within the, within the next about 48 hours that will be at whatever times work for the contributors to talk about the topic that they want to address. So sub teams. So the docs track is one that's on my mind and I put it together. I proposed it like this with a topics, including helping people get started contributor onboarding. What would it take to add site search? Improvements to the doc generator and how to get more improvements. Um, how we do content review, wiki migration plan, pull request progress, and this last one, documentation roadmap. So let's do it one more, which had been discussed last week and two weeks ago, is a documentation inventory and rework proposal based on the inventory. So what, what this one is, is 
a a proposal that here we'll go back here to this document to look at it. It's a proposal we discussed last week with with Meg and with with actually with Meg and then with Kristen Whetstone and Zinav Abubakar. Uh, that what we'd like to do is look at the current content on www.jenkins.io and wiki.jenkins.io and use that to assemble a list of topics that are available and try to slot the topics into places in the books. So it's basically do more of what you had done for us for Hacktoberfest, that kind of technique where we say, let's look at every page that's out there. We, we may not have the capacity yet to, to publish that page, to, to do the rework for it, but that page, if we publish it, would belong here. It would belong here. And the idea is, as a group, we agree, oh, these are the sort of sort of sections that belong in this document. These are the, the general ideas that might be inside that section. We discuss and, and sort of disagree as necessary, dispute with each other. I think it should be this. No, I think it should be that. So that we get a good framework into which, into which we all agree, oh, these topics belong here, but these belong over here. And, and that way we get okay, now we've got a plan that says when the material arrives for this, we put it here. When it arrives for this, it goes here. And, and so this was a, an exercise that, that the parties that we're, we were discussing with seemed very interested in, hey, yes, we could, we could do that. And that would give us a, a chance to, for instance, correct what I had initially thought the original creators of the documentation had said, let's do one book, like the freest, FreeBSD handbook. And about two years ago, I started thinking, oh, we should change it to two books, user and admin. But now I'm back to, no, no, the original technique was really the right way to do it because I don't know how you decide which thing is user and which is admin. And, and so now Meg noted that we might choose pipeline authoring as an entirely separate volume because it's a very different activity, clearly distinct compared to, compared to user work or admin work or UI work. And it's like, yeah, you know, that, that would be viable. So the, the thought was we'll use these docs office hours and the contributor summit to review and discuss this tentative outline. So Right now, I've got the action item to to begin the assembly of this of this uh, this outline. Start the assembly, and I assume what we would do with it is I'll assemble it in a Google Doc with one one line per topic link to the reference to the reference material for that topic. And then we'll use then we'll use discussion and and think about it to decide how to change that document, how to change the location. Now is it actually document probably is the wrong way. Maybe we really do want a Google sheet here because we need to know where it came from and where it's going. So there's more data about this than just would fit into, okay. So yeah, here I am already saying it, it should be a I sheet agree. like we had before, right? Where it came from here, it goes to here. Mm -hmm. Why don't we say um, current material rather than reference? That's going to be ambiguous because there is reference doc versus guide doc. Ah, okay. To current location of the material. Yeah, that works. That better? Good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is, this is placing material well before it's converted. Mm -hmm. but gives us gives us a destination mm -hmm. uh, and and gives us a a chance to because we then have a tabular we have a chance to prioritize which things we think are more useful topics uh, 
based on user interest. So as an example, um, to, to go back to Meg's, Meg's point about the pipeline authoring, pipeline authoring examples continue to be a major request from users. Hey, this plugin doesn't have examples. This plugin doesn't have examples. Could you give me more examples of how this works? Uh, and those examples actually have to be written, must be placed inside the plugin source code. At least in the way things are currently done right now. So when we look at the online feedback form, let's, let's let me grab the docs feedback just because you, I think you need to see this, the, the times when I, I shake my head, some of the words that are said here are really kind of, kind of harsh. So don't, don't be offended by the harshness of some of the things people say here about, hey, mm -hmm. you're, you're a terrible human being for not having written this documentation. But, ah, here we go, a brand new one. So pipeline build step. Just got feedback today. No example, no weight default value. Now a, a comment here. All right, so available arguments for each step of CMake Builder. Um, hey, what are the arguments of, let's see. Yeah, so here's one more on how do you use HTTP request? And each of these, give me an example is is that same caliber of awkward. Describe what only if successful really means and, and et cetera, et cetera. So. It's not enough, but do we have automated tests for all of the steps in all the uh, pipelines? Only, only if the pipeline author wrote those automated tests. And so no, I, I mean, guess, the steps themselves. Yeah, yeah, that's and, and okay. that's why I'm saying the the only test of automated the only testing of pipeline steps is done typically by plugin authors who mm -hmm. would then include those tests in their plugin. So that's because, another good topic. Because because well, what I was going to say is it's not necessarily the best example, but if you have nothing else, if you put the code that you're using to test, it gives something. Right, right. Pipeline, pipeline tests would be good examples to to cite in documentation right? if they're if when they exist. Maybe unit tests for the step, right? Am, have I got the terminology right? It, you do, yeah. So, for example, here I can bring up one that actually has some. Here is a plugin that. I've been working on. And if you look at its tests, there are things here where it says, let's see if I can find some. Come on, tests. Here we go. Things like this. So here are pieces of the test automation that the Git plugin uses. It has all sorts of sample samples from the git plugin steps that can be used okay and, okay. and so, now so the idea is create an entire section in the week for just talk about pipelines that's that's one of the one of the and that's one of the ideas is should we have a dedicated section that is all about authoring pipelines and and it could be part of a single volume or a dedicated volume all on its own either would be okay because you you talk about uh add the documentation pipeline documentation inside the plugin docs right GitHub. so there is a link in git repository pointing to to our week or we just duplicate the content it's it's not even that we duplicate it in in the case of plugins we actually have to write the we don't write the instructions in the in the Jenkins I/O site at all. 
we write them in the plugin site, in the plugin GitHub repositories. And then there's a program that extracts that documentation oh, and okay. places it into the into the documentation site. So, so this I site, if we do pipeline steps here, pipeline steps, this page, and it's a very, very long page, is generated from a program that reads pipeline source code. So if we look at this pipeline nodes and processes is a single plugin that provides these six or seven steps. And all this text is taken right from inside the plugin source code. Okay, and the, the, that section we have just to talk about tutorials will be extinguished or will be evolved. I, I you, think you we, have tutorials about uh, to a specific pro language programmers, for example, Ruby, PHP, Java, and others. It's and just I cards. Think, I think those would continue. I would. I think we would retain the tutorials and keep them because we've recently had more additions to the tutorials. We just recently had uh, IBM submitted a thing on how to do Jenkins on IBM Cloud. Vlad submitted how to do Jenkins on Google Cloud. And, and so we've, we've had new tutorials. So I would suspect we'll keep tutorials as a topic. And then comes the ugly question of the structure of the pipeline reference pages. And like that one you looked at, adding uh -huh. examples is going to make, I mean, it's already ugly. It's hard to find stuff in when that's a good one to look at because it's got a whole lot of stuff. Um, we start adding examples, that's going to become even harder to read. But the basic pipeline reference page, these things need to be broken out into real reference pages or formatted in some way that I can find stuff. Good, good point. So let, there was, I made a, a feeble attempt to create something for here. Let's, let's look at, let's look at a different page and, and I'll show you the feeble attempt I made for one keyword, trying to trying to give more more opening material on the thing before getting into examples. So so the Git plugin actually has a whole bunch of okay. Here are different things about the about how the step works, right. and then a nice. series of examples intentionally stated as examples, um, but. This was, this was an awful lot of work to construct these, and I'm not sure this is the best place to do it, but, but it, it was a place that I had. It's a logical place to do it. I mean, from a pure writing standpoint, it'd be nice to pull it off in a tutorial, but this is where, because the normal thing is you're gonna read a tutorial once or twice to get the big picture, and then you're gonna be in the reference materials all the time. Now, does right. Git just have the one step for it? It, it, it has one step and then it has the more important piece is the thing called the checkout step. Right. Right. And the checkout step is, let's see. Yeah. So the checkout step really should be linked here. And if I, if I, as I look at it, it's, it's actually not. So the checkout step and the checkout step is terrifying. If we look at the checkout step on these pages, you're going to have to wait patiently while the page loads because it is so large. Just a minute, I've got to show it to you. Because <laughs> it, it highlights just, all right, so my client SCM step has one step. I'm gonna click it. Now we're going to wait, all right. It has loaded the page. Notice how many different implementations of checkout there are. And each of them is a valid implementation. So oh, you see yes. this, now if I expand, Git SCM, this one is the description of all the things related to the Git plugin, and it's got an enormous amount of options and settings, and that's just one of these things that I've expanded. Right. If I expand them all, this page is, is just huge. So certainly there is lots to improve. In, in this particular page, checkout, checkout should be the most popular, one of the most popular pages there is, 
but its content is is quite a struggle to manage because of something, you know, if you want to do subversion, here's subversion. If you want to do bitkeeper, here's bitkeeper or bazaar or or dimensions from CA technologies. I mean, each of each of these SCMs has their own subsection on this, but it's hard to navigate this thing. At the top, and then there's no discussion at the head that says find right. the SCM that you, you know, and look on and click on that. That's not there. Because what I was going to say back to yours was like, I mean, what you've got there is not, it's actually not bad. I kind of like it. But what I'm thinking of is if you had four steps for that plugin, mm -hmm. you'd get buried in the first one and it's like, but you're looking for one of the other three. Right. Exactly. Which, yeah, so. I keep, I don't know, I keep coming back to man pages in my head. It may just be that I did man pages for too long that I see the whole world through man pages. But yeah, so that, that sort of structure, you know, not we don't have to go. Yeah, we don't have how, to go well, how to generate them, how to how to how to make them more usable. How to make them more usable. How to make them uh, actually there's another one that's a good good maybe a good alignment with this one more yeah, helpful uh, is REST API uh, doc generation. Uh -huh. Because we have a Google Summer of Code project that's proposing to write the program to do extraction of the Jenkins REST API. Oh. But, but the student that's, that's preparing for, to set, submit a proposal for that has had questions and, and bumps and bruises along the way because right now we have no document. We have only the online documentation that's inside Jenkins itself, no separate documentation on the REST API. Oh, is that true for CLI as well? Uh, that's a good, another good question. Document, Swagger spec, an open API spec. Uh, so I think the CLI documentation is available. And I think if we look here, so let's go Jenkins CLI doc. Hmm. So here's a, at least a, a page dedicated to it. Uh, Jonathan actually, I think had contributed a significant portion of this page, if I remember right. Jonathan, wasn't this one of the early pages you had worked on? Yeah, I guess it was. Yes, it was. It's the, the, my pattern for take screenshots. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. So, so, so we've, we've got the CLI. What we, what we, and even, even there, the CLI has has this interesting behavior that if I if I look at it like this, it generates the commands dynamically based on my installed set of plugins. Right. That you and also I get that think, off the dashboard. Right. And I don't know that we tell anybody that, hey, the first place you should refer is inside your own Jenkins installation. So so this is this is equivalent, roughly equivalent to the pipeline syntax page. You know, if I want to know how to enable a plugin or delete a build or. Right. So. Yeah, I think we refer to this, but I don't remember where, but during installation or after installation, you can find oh, a reference to this page, but I don't Excellent. recall where exactly. This, okay. Uh, yeah, we actually need a whole section that pulls together everything on administering Jenkins without the UI. Another uh, good suggestion. Yeah, and, and that's that's another right. Administering Jenkins as code, right? Right. 
without the UI as code. And there are things like configuration as code plugin, right? There's the job PSL plugin. There are um, stored XML files in a, in a uh, actually we should put it this way, in the Jenkins REST API. All right. Jenkins CLI tool. All right. And stored XML files in a Git repository. Uh, Mark, in all these years work with Jenkins, uh, you already uh, have or, or get the information about what is the most common cases in using Jenkins. For example, to with that with that information, we can just work samples based on the user experience. So, for example, we can, can use two case for just uh, write about it and give instructions about the most common uses in Jenkins. Good question. Yes. Yeah, so we, we have that information in some studio or farms or something so like that. We have. Let's let's take it this way. What we what I see reports of periodically is what are the most frequently accessed pages. Jonathan, I think what you're asking is how do we prioritize which which place we should focus first? Is that what you're asking? Or mm, not pages, users, because we are writing for them. So for example, uh, we we uh, we know the most important, for example, it's pipelines, but which part of pipelines are more important? We can oh. use page. We can use page as reference because it's missing content there, or it's just uh, uh, pulverized inside the week. So we need some user feedback, only just saying, "Look, this part is important." Or, for example, we have partners and some events in some places. Then just uh, can share the case of use for Jenkins. So for example, our pipeline here just work running sonar plugin, running uh, tests and integrations and access GitHub and pull and push everything go from there into there. So with that information, we can just put our focus to construct that um, more valuable user experience. Definitely, but we need to be careful because, for instance, we know that last I heard something like 54% of the jobs running in the Jenkins world were freestyle. But we don't get called on, but I think they're old stuff from people who've been doing them forever. They're not looking for documentation on how to do freestyle jobs, whereas pipelines are new. So, so we go for that. And we also, there's, there's always going to be a split. I'm going to think that novices, most novices in a small installation are gonna do most of their admin initially from the GUI. But as the installation gets bigger and they get more sophisticated, um, and if they aren't, some people are just love a GUI and will put up with anything, but they're gonna to wanna to get into the command line and they're gonna to wanna to automate and script it. So there's some, and for some of these, there is a split. I mean, within that there's prioritization too. Um, you know, different, but, okay. so, but it would be good to take a slice at some of that. It's not, I don't think we can come up yet with an algorithm that makes it obvious that, okay, for this data, this is higher priority than that, but. Yeah, so, so, well, Jonathan, to give some, I, I think, let's see, I, let, let's see if I can try with some possible data sources and let's, let me test with you to see if you think those data sources would be informative towards your, the question. Did I get the questions correct? How do, how do we prioritize where to focus our efforts first? Yeah, in pipeline scope. Okay. Not in, uh, to not be, yeah, exactly. Okay, so for example, you... in, in my example, for example, uh, if I'm just using Jenkins the first time, so I will just build small process using freestyle pipelines, but what kind of process? So for example, the first time we just arrive in Jenkins Wiki, where you go if you are a first user, you are first company user about Jenkins. 
So just for example, you can offer them a suggestions. Look, if your company are using Jenkins of the first time, uh, start to just merging your brands, for example, or just check out your brands. Okay, so step by step, go and involve your process, moving your manual manually process to automatized process with Jenkins. So first, integrate your GitHub. Second, integrate your development server. Then you staging server. Then you less time, less step of your integration, just integration your um, the, uh, production server, for example. So we can create a hold map for guiding through the way. Or we, for that one, I would say, see, I don't, um, freestyle is never going to go away, but if somebody who isn't used to using freestyle, there's no sense starting them with it. It's ugly and it's limited. If they're brand new, I would throw them into Blue Ocean, which will hook up the, the SCM for them. And they can do a basic, you know, build, test, deploy pipeline with that and use those tools. And then as they get, and from that, they can always pop out. They've got an editor within that. But I think that's a good, I think that's a good starting spot. And they, they miss all sorts of opportunities to shoot themselves in the foot. Now, as soon as they figure out what they're doing, they're, I think they're going to get bored with the graphical interface oh. and want to, want to get to a command line. So would you envision that, as I was thinking about that, focus on the user activity, I assume that might be more tutorial than reference material. Am I understanding what you're envisioning, Jonathan, or could you explain a little further? So uh, what specific you want more explanation? My, my explanation? Uh, so, so when I think, I, I, I assume this would mean a tutorial, uh, tutorials that guide them to success. Yeah, just not one tutorial, a bundle of tutorial, based on step-by-step -step of become more experienced while you are using Jenkins. Right. So not a, a huge tutorial, just step-by-step. -step. So uh, start uh, here, go to here. So we, because we, are, we already have a lot of tutorials. So we need just to organize them in the way J, the user just could, uh, could keep going through the tutorials. Okay, so it's, I see. I think what you're saying is like tutorial segments where they might be able to drop into a segment, use that segment and succeed with a segment. So things like uh, compiling C, a C program. Exactly, like, like an storytelling, storytelling. So for example, right, you, okay. you just going through the history, the, the, the journey. So let me give some examples here to test to see if, I, if I'm understanding what you're suggesting. Running unit tests, uh, running tests and seeing, seeing the coverage report. Uh, let's see, running static analysis. Uh, and so things like check style, PMD, find bugs or spot bugs, and seeing the report. Yeah, for simple, but just using the right order, suggestion order, suggestion right order. Okay, I didn't understand that. Say it again for me. Using. Yeah, it's exactly why you are just uh, writing down. It's just for which suggest for the user read in this exactly order to give more sense for you reading and so you, it's for you. So it's almost a learning path. It's almost a learning exactly, path. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Oh, 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 like a learning path. That. I see. Okay, so so learning paths. If we did a learning path kind of thing, it would probably be technology as the uppermost or the uh, the let's call it language language at the at the, the outermost wrapper uh, c ruby python php because they each have their own their own unique things and then um, common life cycle steps or common activities with that language? 
Is that is that am I describing what you're what you're envisioning, Jonathan? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's exactly that. Because so when we when I think of C or C plus plus, it's okay compiling. That with Ruby, there really isn't a in Python. There isn't a compile phase. It's mostly take it and test it, run the the, the test automation. Yeah, but it's just a, a small difference. Okay, so for example, compiling it's a, a one step more step in your pipeline process. So if you need to use C and you need to compile your build, for example, just go to there. If not, just go through in the main path. Okay. Because if you if we can define a template to guide the writer, we can use that template for other language. So we just put there some difference between them technologies. For example, because uh, the same example you, you give to us, for example, you have compiling program, language program and other are just interpreted. But uh, for example, if you, I'm just check out for GitHub, it's one process. If I'm check out from SVN, it's another process. But it's the same uh, activity, just the uh, actors are different. Got it, okay. Yeah, I, I think I see your point. So it, the idea is that if, if we have a concept of, hey, here's a language, we, if we have a framework that is language independent or at least somewhat language independent as the, as the structure, and then when we implement for a specific language, we just follow that structure. Is that sort of what you're saying? Exactly, exactly. Because using this template, we can a holistic vision about the entire process. Everything is the same thing. Just the actor, actors are different. I see. Thank you. Okay, got it. That's a template. Good. Okay. Excellent. And then, but God, what makes me nervous there is then <clears throat> we need a matrix of that as to whether you're using Maven or Gradle or NPM or. Well, and see, for me, that's part of, that's part of, that's, that's actually effectively a language because, okay, Maven, Gradle, uh, let's see, CMake. I mean, there, there are a number NPM. of. NPM, don't forget. NP it. Oh yes, NPM, right? Absolutely. Yep. Um, there's <laughs> Ant. <laughs> I don't know if we want to go there, but there's Ant. <laughs> there is, yes. Okay. I use it all the time. Um, language, language, or build tool, right? right? Because there's GoLang, for instance, which is both language and build tool. Ah, and it's yeah. certainly very popular. And then there's another direction where you start out, this is declarative pipeline and you go into blue ocean and you have a step that Echo says, here, we're gonna build our code and here we're gonna do unit tests and here we're gonna, you know, et cetera. And that, but that's, I mean, it's like, there's this, you know, multifaceted matrix of where you get started. That's another piece they have to get, right? Good point, right? It's, it's, this is pipeline, pipeline authoring is, is a, is a different kind of thing than these, right? Here, here, there are probably many, many people who, who know the language in a team. The pipeline not learning path is not as commonly, not as well known. Yeah. So, Right. Steps, pipeline authoring, learning path. Theoretically, when they come to Jenkins, they already know how to build, test, and deploy their C app or Ruby app or Python app. Right. Theoretically. The problem is, of course, they don't always. So then we, then it gets nasty. But, mm -hmm. um, 
But yeah, the current documentation does just assume that you know all that, and then here's how you put it into pipeline. Got I mean, it. actually, for tools, you have to think about um, script, shell script and BAT, too. Oh, yes, right, of course. MS build. Yeah. Yep. And each of those has, I might put it in this order because SH and BAT are closer to being stone knives than MS build is. Yeah. Okay. Good. But then for prioritization, too, when we're looking at the reference materials that need to be fixed. I mean, what are there, like 1,700 pipelines and God knows how many steps that results in. Some of them are clearly more popular than others, and some of them are have probably been dead for five years. So knowing where we put our energy to get good examples and good explanation and stuff. That, so that's, a, that's a, another, that's, I think of that as a different topic on a different sort of question because I think you're right. There are, there's so much work that could be done in, in reference material in general, right? So pipeline right. steps, for instance, uh, are the most frequent, most frequent requested, most, most frequent asked for, um, for examples, right? Hey, give me an example of this. Right. Uh, clear descriptions of arguments, etc. And but clearly some steps need that more than others is what I'm so yeah, the, yeah, the right. commonality was how do we prioritize? Yeah, and I think that was where I was initially thinking uh, we could refer to Gavin Mogan's um, report of most access plugin pages. Mm -hmm. Right. As one as one data point, it's not the total answer. But it is is it is, is one. The other we could we could ask for, and I suspect it's in the log somewhere. Ask for um, the hit counts or other page statistics for Jenkins for. Jenkins.io pages right. to see, hey, which one are they looking at? If we get lots of hits on the GitHub solutions page, we should strengthen it. If we get very few and we get a lot on installing on Kubernetes, we should improve that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's the stuff we don't have. If we had a good search engine, we could track the search strings that were applied that didn't get a good hit. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. That's it. Because there is something, I mean, once I, you know, for anything I work with it, I get to know this reference page is pretty good. So I go there all the time, but I go there because it's good. There's something else that I really don't understand, but I've looked, there's nothing written about it. So I have nothing to hit to for our statistics. Good idea. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I saw. Well, sorry. Oh, oh. Well, just I uh, just a thought <laughs> about when we're talking about reference materials, we had somewhere a link to the uh, priorities in contributing to plugins. Uh, we have somewhere this link where uh, which said which plugins are uh, requiring some contributors and don't have maintainers, something like this. Uh, and in general, uh, when we're talking about examples, my uh, uh, goal is to have something similar to uh, 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 W3 schools, when they provide some examples, but at the same time in separate window, iframe or whatever they organize these days, they allow a user who is reading this to try their own version of uh, um, of uh, whatever topic is discussed, for instance, or whatever they uh, uh, 
And uh, we have somewhere, I guess, related to declarative uh, syntax inside our documentation, but not much, allowing a uh, user, the reader of our documentation, to try on their own how uh, it will be implemented. So I guess it requires some thinking about how to organize, and this would be ideal, of course. I'm not sure if it is achievable at all, but allowing a user, for instance, talking about uh, uh, well, pipelines, create their own pipeline or freestyle job and go and see what happens. Um, yeah, well, just just a thought. But yeah, uh, so Jonathan wanted to say something. So yeah. Go ahead, Jonathan. Yeah, for example, uh, we talk about this in the past, but I just have given uh, bring back the topic again. There isn't any chance we we uh, just start to use, for example, Algolia for our page, just for improve our uh, our user experience when searching searching about the topics. So, for example, Algolia use a AI AI intelligence just to map all your documentation of all free projects around the world are using a lot in this moment so for example i put the link in the chat so you can just access there we can a free plan to use but for of course it's a small plan for us so we need to find some partners to uh, just buy to us some for example, plan just to use Algolia in our website. So there is, for example, pricing there. We we can use more than one thousand uh, uh, search for requests for free, but it's not uh, uh, enough for us, for example. So we need to find a, for example, uh, some institution to just to. I don't know the uh, word in English to guarantee the service for us. <laughs> uh, uh, sponsors, yeah, exactly. There is some way just to find sponsors to use that engine or other similar. Because with this engine search inside our page that the users can just find what they are looking for. Right, right, very good. So the yeah, because to us it's simple because we already know our own documentation. So we just use Ctrl F and just search for things. But the users, their company, when they arrive in our site, they have no idea where is Jenkins pipeline, where is that tutorial about PHP or about Java, where is that tutorial about Maven. They have no idea. So we need a search engine. Yeah, a good. Good. So as an example that further supports what you've noted there, Oleg did a prototype search for Jenkins for Jenkins.io using Elasticsearch. However, Good. has the same exact challenge that Algolia does is that Elastic is only willing to donate their search services to what I think he said it was nonprofits and they weren't clear that uh, they were not clear that Jenkins was a nonprofit. Hmm. Jenkins certainly mm -hmm. is a nonprofit, but we're not a registered nonprofit in the US legal sense. Hmm. Really? At least as far as I know, we're not. I, I didn't know that information. Hmm. I see. Uh, and so it's, it, it, I don't know what the, what the, the limitations were there, but, but Elastic was one that, but whoever it is, someplace has to host that search engine, right? There is, there is some execution of code there and that execution of code has some cost. Exactly. And, and so whatever search service has some costs or um, for instance, I think a prototype had been done using Google search. The problem with Google search is if we use Google search, we risk that um, 
antagonists or what might even be called competitors in, get injected into the search results. So I would rather not have the Jenkins documentation page having something that suggests Circle CI is a good choice for instead of Jenkins. You know, they've been, they've been very actively attacking. Oh, you should up, replace your Jenkins with Circle, and I have no interest in our search results giving any hint that exactly. you go to Circle CI. Exactly. That's, that's exactly. Just, So, so this, the site search engine, feels like another very good topic for discussion at, in fact, I think I'm going to, yeah, so for as a, as part of that, um, the govern, not governance, the contributor summit, because I think, I think it's, this is a, someone may, may say, hey, I would like to contribute, but I don't want to write documentation. This is an opportunity to write some code to contribute towards the uh, toward the project, right? It would it would help just like the REST API generator is a help. Good. Exactly, and I'm quite quite sure if we use a search engine, the experience uh, just onboarding and Jenkins become better. Right. I guess at uh, Algolia, it's a a good, a really good option because all other projects I work on are using Algolia. So oh, okay. I don't know if if have a good plan for institution or it's a cheaper one. I don't know the reason, but they all are using Algolia. Well, I guess in this case, the proper path would be to write some kind of Jenkins plugin for Algolia and use this plugin in our documentation for doing search. Yeah, yeah, it's something like that, right? Where it's, it's a, it, how somebody would have to do a prototype and, and see how, how the documentation would feel if we're using Algoli as the search engine. Could, could our pages still continue to be the static site that it is or does something else have to change? I, I think it's an interesting ex, uh, experiment. Yeah, it's static sites, they you use the static sites. All oh, the documentation do. I just, yeah all stack uh, sites with Markdown. I don't know with uh, uh, ad, hoc, ad hoc files, but they use Markdown. Mm -hmm. okay. and that, why is Jenkins not registered as a nonprofit? Or maybe it's the foundation CDF? Yeah, that's that's a piece that I think needs more discussion. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I didn't understand the details there. And yes, that what I think I do understand is a very high, I don't know how these decisions are made, but <clears throat> for these companies, when they donate stuff, <clears throat> they get to report that as a t loss on their tax. It's a contribution. Uh, so they get uh, okay. a tax break. But if we're not a registered nonprofit, they don't get that tax break. I see, okay. Yeah. So that, I mean, I think it's just an administrative one. Now, what I don't know at the other end is what the ramifications are for CDF or Jenkins being officially a nonprofit for companies that are then using that as a base and making a profit off it. I don't think that the open source stuff has been registered and maybe that we need to have a separate category, which, you know, don't even want to think about getting that to Washington DC right now, but. Uh, yeah, don't, don't know. That's a, that's a valid concern. But it'd be a good question. It'd be interesting just to ask like Tracy you know, just off the top of, is it just a matter of file, you know, how would they feel about CDF being a registered nonprofit? Yeah, and Because I don't know what the ramification, all the ramifications are at that end. But I guess one of the advantages would be that uh, contributors, Jenkins contributors can receive some, well, rewards. <laughs> uh, from sponsors and just- I mean, are you also, for... Jenkins is big enough that it might be worth something to them just that the search engine box says search powered by Agolia. You know, yeah. that's advertising. Right. And and those are those are things that we would need to discuss with the the provider, which one, whichever one it is, right? If we use Algolia, right. if we use something else to see would you sponsor us because they they would be providing economic, there would be economic cost to them to do it. Yeah. Right. Very good. Well, and there's a couple of ways too. I mean, they could say we'll give you the song, we'll give you the 
you know, commercial software will give you the professional software, but you've got to find your own servers. And Google's oh. our best place to go for those, but I'm not sure Google's going to want to sponsor something that's not using their, their search. So, right, Boy, right. The yes. mind boggles. A good so, point, Meg. <laughs> all right. So we oh, what have... a tangled web we weave. <laughs> <laughs> So we've we've hit our hour. I I would generally like to hold to an hour. Any other hot topics before we close? Do we okay. know anything more about the schedule, the FOSDEM schedule, like days and hours and this sort of yeah, stuff? Yeah, so February, so this the contributor summit is now set February 23 through 25. Okay. And the first session, day one, will be, I think it was at 3 p.m. at 1500 UTC on the 23rd. And this one is at 15 on the 25th. OK. The other tracks, we will determine dynamically at the, at the conclusion of the first session which tracks we are going to put people on and what time they will be. Okay. So, and, and we'll keep talking in this session. I'm, I'm continuing to send invitations to people to consider joining and leading a track. And so those, those conversations are ongoing. All right. Okay. Anything else? Thanks, everybody. We'll call this an end. I will do a recording. Jonathan, great to see you. Vlad, Meg, thanks great very, to see very you much. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a Bye. good week, everybody. Mm -hmm.